everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramps. I'm here to usher you in to the weekend. It is the last weekend in May, which means it's Memorial Day weekend, and the library is going to be closed Sunday, Monday, this weekend as well. And also, another big thing that's happening this weekend is MissCon. Um, Missoula convention, you know, it's a great way for people who are uh, who are in a certain fandoms to uh, dress up and cosplay and have all sorts of fun this weekend as well. Um, I have a lot of other events to talk about. Uh, I got a new dub and stuff for you guys. I have a lot of things I have to address as well, but first and foremost is that the library had a lockdown um, and closure Wednesday afternoon. So here is a statement from Wednesday from the library, uh, and I'm going to repeat it for you guys. Wednesday afternoon, on uh, May 25th, an incident took place at the Missoula Public Library's downtown facility requiring law enforcement officers to use pepper spray and remove an uh, uncooperative patron from the premises. Police reports that the patron had uh, barricaded himself into a restroom and uh, brandished a knife at officers. He was disarmed and taken into custody. There was no threat to public during the incident and no injuries reported. The building was evacuated by library staff to ensure the safety and well-being of all library visitors and workers. Due to the Due to the residual effects of the pepper spray, the library remained closed Wednesday. The library resumed its hours and services on Thursday. So there's not much more to report on this as well, uh, but uh, because at this time, I actually was in the process of leaving work just as the situation was ramping up. I usually miss everything. I'm usually not even much of a spectator. I'm more just like kind of like, oh, that happened. So that's kind of what my story is. So that I can't really add much to it. But I can add this uh, one funny anecdote by Neil, who also works here, who was here at the time when he had to get evacuated with the other staff. And he said that one of the um, other patrons um, was desperate to uh, bring back a return, bro a return was desperate to return a book. So I thought that was kind of funny. So moving on, uh, big news that happened this week. Of course, this is kind of. Uh, uh, something that uh, kind of got buried in the news, but this is something that's very important that I also wanted to bring up is that a 288 page investigation went into a series of abuses that spanned over 20 years. The report asserts that the executive committee staffer of the uh, Southern Baptist Church have been exposed for covering up allegations of sexual abuse from their higher ups. Basically, the church did um, internal investigations, which, you know, usually goes nowhere, but when they appointed a third-party committee to look into these allegations, oh, all hell broke loose. Pardon my language, but last year, thousands of delegates at the National SBC gathered ma made clear that they do not want executive committee to oversee an investigation of its own actions. Instead, they voted overwhelmingly to create a task force charged with overseeing the third-party review. Lytton Pastor of Redemption Church in Saraland, Alabama, appointed the panel. Those who brought up the allegations of abuse uh, to the higher-ups in the past were met with, the only thing you can do is pray or be told not to talk about it. Those who did speak up were bullied and harassed through hate mail and other means online as well. Uh, so far, th this is just the start, and these reports tend to snowball into something bigger. And one of the bigger things that happened, there was a viral video that popped up recently of uh, a preacher who... Uh, admitted it and he threw mercy to the people um, and, he, and he, he admitted it. But just as he admitted it, a, uh, a woman who said that when she was 16 years old, she was abused by that same preacher and confronted him right to his face. And that video was, uh, that video definitely went viral. So um, that's kind of where I'm gonna end right there. There's a lot of news happening. I wanna get through it as fast as possible. I'm just kind of giving the cliff notes. Uh, NPR did yet another story that exposed the amount of people uh, since 2021 who have had a tow, had to flee their home. Um, so this year, uh, in terms of refugees, um, this is a very staggering um, uh, disaster just in terms of humans just migrating and refugees. And more than 100 million people have left their homes in fear of violence and about a quarter of them from natural disasters. So Ukraine was about uh, just over 10 million people had to flee their own country. And this is just a one country compared to all other countries that are dealing with a lot of the similar um, high acts of violence, fear of violence, and just all sorts of different issues that are happening in the world today. And uh, it kind of stuck on NPR this week, but I, I wanted to mention that there are some folks looking to get back to their homeland in Ukraine, 
trying to salvage their lives. So at the end of the Mariupol siege that ended in Ukraine's loss, and you know, it's, it's many cities like Kharkiv and other eastern cities are pushing back the Russian advance, but it seems like the Russians had a, 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 a foothold in some of their southern regions, port cities near Crimea and Mariupol, which is pretty close to it as well, and uh, further encompassing the Black Sea in which uh, Ukraine b uh, pretty much is north of. So from Russia, from the Russian perspective, uh, Boris uh, Bendarev, a counselor in the Russian mission since 2019 who described himself as a 20-year veteran of Russian's foreign ministry, announced his resignation in an email sent to diplomats to the Geneva to Geneva on Monday. His resignation is the most high-profile gesture of protest so far made by a Russian diplomat over this Ukraine conflict. And of course, this has been three months into the Russia mid-level diplomat had to get his affairs in order, but he could uh, but he said that it, he had to, he used this time to gather his resolve. But also, if you really think about it, a lot of people who are in Russia who speak against Russia, it's basically treason at this point, just because you know recently they passed that law in Russia of spreading misinformation for up to 15 years in prison. So there's a lot of uh, crackdown happening in Russia that are just not really being thought of, and you know it's it's just a lot of things as well. So people tend to defend their homes before they defend their countries. Sometimes those goals align and the Russian people are being divided very much like ourselves here in America as well, while their government thinks they have no accountability. And I think there's a lot of uh, similarities for sure. But I don't want to get into it too much. Um, but I think this is the biggest thing that's happening as well. And I, it's really hard to cover this kind of stuff because you know, this is something I kind of spoke about this last week in terms of the mass shooting that happened in Buffalo. And Tuesday, we saw yet another mass shooting, this time in elementary school children. So lone gunman, 18 year old, uh, walked into Uvalde, Texas a school and opened um, and uh, barricaded himself into one of the classrooms in which had uh, two teachers and 19 students. Um, uh, NPR on Wednesday reported that these kids and teachers were from one fourth grade classroom. The attack at Robb Elementary occurred just two days before summer break. This summer, about 600 taught students in grades two through four. And, you know, it's, uh, it's just another sad chapter in this country that has uh, more mass shootings a day, uh, more shootings than days in a year, according to uh, Connecticut U.S. Senator Chris Murphy, who came to Congress representing Sandy Hook has begged his colleagues to fully pass a legislation to address the nation's continuing gun violence problem. And I suggest you watch this because um, he, he made a lot of good points and a lot of uh, poignant uh, parts in this. And he also said that stop sending this quiet message of endorsement to these killers. It really kind of sucks uh, because school was almost out for Rob Elementary and just to have this kind of thing happen to them just before school. And even worse, there's a new narrative while the shooting, while the while this uh, story was coming out, it turns out the police were idling by and stood by for almost an hour leaving the school alone, leaving the shooter alone in the classroom with these kids and teachers and viral videos of police arresting parents willing to rush the school while they verbally berate police officers. NBC reported almost a day after shooting that the husband of one of the teachers killed had a heart attack. So Guadalupe Joe Garcia, the husband of 46-year-old victim, Irma Garcia, who was shot and killed while sheltering with children in the classroom, died two days after the mass killing that shattered his family. A cousin of his wife confirmed this recently. Uh, they left behind four children. The same cousin, Deborah Austin, set up a GoFundMe site to ask for support. The Garcia's nephew, Joe Martinez, said via Twitter that the couple's children's ages are 13, 15, 19, and 23. It's just not a good situation for anybody. And they have a good GoFundMe if you guys feel like you want to uh, donate to them as well. So um, I'm going to end my news report there. There's a lot of go but there's definitely a lot of stuff going on here, but I wanted to kind of end it there. I'm sorry it was kind of a somber note, but there's just really not much to kind of say. Um, up next here is an art clip featuring Ellen Ornitz, and this is at the uh, Mizzou Art Museum featuring the exhibit Fossils. <laughs>
All right, so you guys have about a week to check that out. Um, as the, uh, many of these exhibits will be ending in the middle of June. So as we're going into uh, more summer months, we're having some summer media, some summer movies and summer things. I mean, honestly, a lot of the movies that came out in the summer are supposed to distract you and make you think of different things and just have a good old time. So let's kick things off with a couple movies that are coming out this weekend. Um, Top Gun Maverick. This is where I, uh, I'm going to prejudge this movie based on absolutely nothing. I haven't even seen the original Top Gun movie, but I'm assuming it has to do with uh, pilots. Uh, when a disgraced fighter pilot is brought back to train a new crew recruits, he's going to need more than a shirtless volleyball and shirtless volleyball scene. Maybe a motorcycle racing a jet at high speeds too, not sure. But here we go, watch Tom Cruise make another movie where insurance rates are bound to go up during this production. Hey, he's doing a uh, movie in space next, actually in space, the first Hollywood movie in space. He's doing it with Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin. Anyways, such watch a movie that used practical effects of actors try not to pass out as they try to keep up with Tom Cruise. It ain't gonna happen. Tom Cruise is the Wayne Gretzky of acting, just keeps going and going. Miles Teller is in this movie playing his type of role in the shadow of a better actor. Uh, and while they spend over $150 million and have over 800 hours of footage, it better be good. Um, followed by this movie, which, um, Hey, you know, you know, like you know, like how you like those old animated TV shows that are really, really popular. You know, you, they throw them in movies, they give them uh, pretty harsh lines and shadows. Boom, you got a uh, animated movie based on the TV series. Bob's Burgers, as previous movie was written with love. Bob Burgers will be written with a root route of dark sarcasm in the burger joint known as Bob's Burger. Bob Burger movie joins this quirky family animated comedy as they add shadow and texture to the original fox skin to be like, all you have to do is just put a like contrast, boom, done. Maybe a whoosh, uh, one of those uh, lines and the crop and feather things. I'm assuming this movie will be the kind of slice of life disrupted by a large force that only this family reluctantly can save their pure town of Warfed, Warf, the Warf. I mean, I've only seen the show only so much. Um, I know Bob, Tina, Luis, Gene, uh, yeah, those people. And Teddy, who can, who can forget Teddy? He's great. Um, so I'm really bad with names and I have a very kind of like a dad approach to this review. So Cannonball Z, Stupid Heroes is coming out. Um, that's an anime. Uh, moving on to our uh, last one, actually, I added the last one just before I started the show, but this is Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 1, or Part 1. Uh, turns out every Netflix is affected by, even Netflix is like, affected by change instead of dumping everything all at once. Why don't they just release a little bit of something, and then they just release a little bit more of something, and then release a little bit more of something. So it's basically back to old TV. So why bother with the whole release window, with the whole season, when they can't annoy fans because of the algorithm said so. So all hail the algorithms. <laughs> Watch this series of oh, went full red scare in the previous season as we pick up the uh, sheriff in a Russian gulag. Uh, the kids are doing something, I assume, maybe monsters. I believe that there's scary house and even scarier bad guy who looks more like Psycho Gorman. So if you don't know who Psycho Gorman is, he, let me educate you guys because the bad guy in this movie looks exactly like Psycho Gorman. Uh, of course, you know, yeah, interdimensional demon bent on destroying the world. Hey, it's great, it's wonderful. Stranger Things, woo! Anyways, this is uh, things get a little hairy for our kids, now teens, dealing with horror elements from the realm of darkness, AKA puberty, uh, or actual evil, which is the underground, which it's referred to, and uh, also being a teenager, all the fun, weird, isolating scenes that we frankly do to ourselves. <laughs> all right. Finally, we have this next show that's coming out. It's the Obi-Wan show. They might as well just call it the Obi-Wan show because welcome to yet another Star Wars that went from being a treat yourself artisan meal mwah, to more just like getting regular pizza from the Star Wars universe as they retcon Baby Yoda in the larger cinematic universe. I swear to God, they're gonna come out with like a prequel reboot series and then Baby Yoda is just kind of in the background waving. And it's just like, spot the Baby Yoda in the movie. And I was like, okay, whatever. But anyways, um, <laughs> you get a chance to go back to Tatooine, the desert planet once again, because we all love deserts. Um, enjoying uh, Obi-Wan as he just kind of hangs out in the desert and just like, I must train the boy. It's like, like he trained his father. Oh, snap! And then, you know, everyone's just like, okay, cool. All right, so anyways, um, 
I, I honestly have no idea what this show's about. It's basically him kind of surviving during the time between the third movie and the first movie. And from the trailer, you see that uh, Luke Skywalker is probably like a, a 10, 11 year old kid. And so I guess he has a good amount of years. Hey, there's 18 years that happened between um, episode three and then this, the, this Star, uh, Star Wars episode one, New Hope, blah, 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 all that stuff. But um, anyways, find out how Obi-Wan started going by Ben. Ben may may not be my first name, but it's a part of me now. Obi-Wan looks off and he thinks of a guy he stole the name from, probably in honor of him or them, because modern writing matches the era in which we live in rather than creating a, an original world. So anyways, that's, that's what's coming out this weekend. Um, I hopefully this made you feel a little bit better and maybe distracted you for some of the horrors that are actually happening in reality. So, um, and i sorry if I remind you to about some of the realities, but um, moving on, um, here's a brand new dub and stuff for you guys, and this is Attack of the Eye Creature, and this is from the 1967 horror film. Terry, he decided to join the police department. Man, your brother o used to be really cool. Yeah, he had dreadlocks and everything. He had a car. <laughs> well, he still has a car. It's just not quite the same kind of car that, you know, you used to. So, you know. But do you think he can use his legal mojo to get us out of a sticky situation? What? We need your help. Oh. Oh, jeez. I don't know what you guys got yourselves into, but I think I should actually call my brother. I think we're going to need a lawyer. Oh, no, no. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> All right. Hey, Howie. How are you doing over there? Oh, it's your brother. brother. I don't have a brother. Pat. It's your brother, Pat. Don't you recognize my voice? I know it's over the phone. It's kind of filtered, but... Wait a minute, Pat. Is that really you? I haven't heard from you in like over three hours. How you doing? Uh, I, I'm fine. Um, well, this is a police line. You should probably make it quick. Oh, oh, yeah, I need your help. I don't sell anymore. You know that. Oh, I, I miss those old good old days of back in the day where you and your friends would come over and we'd hang out in the basement. This is a police matter, Howie. My friends are in deep. They need as much help as they can get. I, I hope you can advocate for them for maybe a lighter sentence or anything. Well, that is beyond my uh, jurisdiction. I'm not sure. Perhaps maybe you tell me what they did and I could probably help them. But Listen, Howie, I know we've been through a lot. They should probably get a lawyer. We're college students. We can't afford a lawyer. What are you, crazy? Sorry. I'll see what I can do. Now listen closely. Uh-huh. All right. Thanks. Ugh. Well, what was it? You guys better get a lawyer. I'm telling you what. <laughs> you think this is some kind of joke? This is your future. Oh, Pat, don't over-exaggerate. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe I am exaggerating. <laughs> That's the Pat we know. Let's ignore our problems just like the U.S. government. You know, this government was built on justice, law and order, and defending what's yours. And... <laughs> if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd like to uh, bring my camera and so oh, I can fun. document your guys' arrest, your struggle, and some of the court proceedings and therefore after. Shall we then? Okay, okay. Our car is over here. Huh, nice car. It, my, my daddy bought it for me. Why? When I graduated from high school. Oh, okay. Were, were you an honor student? <laughs> no. Hey, uh, by the way, where'd you get those pajamas? Internet. Most people get it from the internet. Uh, come on now. Hey, Pat, can you get in the driver's seat? We're going to have to push you to start it. Well, maybe we should just call the police to help us out. What the heck is wrong with you? We, they're not just some kind of maid service. Well, they don't seem to mind talking to me. Ugh. Oh, come on. You like hanging out with us. I will never admit to anything. Good day, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, let's get out of here. Oh, please. Yes. Let's get on going. Let's go find this body that you guys left on the road. Jeez, why don't you just call the police and just tell them? <laughs> Does this remind you of our first date? I'll never forget it. <laughs> I wish I could forget it. This is some horror movie BS. Okay, what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to uh, release the I, clutch. I know and, what I'm uh, doing. Turn the key. Okay, here we go. I. All right, I'm guys. Crappy cars, Make okay, sure you guys. buckle up. What have you gotten me into? We can't just leave a dead deer on the side of a road. It's not uh, right. A dead deer? This oh. What do you think it was? <laughs> a dead human? <laughs> yeah, right.
Well, no one likes a good misunderstanding, so uh, yeah. That whole thing was a misunderstanding. So let's move on to some city council. Uh, kicking things off is, um, let's see here, let's go over to my notes. Joe Pascal Help uh, kicked off this public comment portion um, saying that, uh, you know, the city is putting money towards uh, the wrong places in terms of uh, these homeless shelters and Rogers International Security. So here he is once again. Uh, I wasn't here last week. Uh, kind of had a screwed up weekend, so I don't have something written for you uh, ahead of time. So I'm just going to tell you about one of the last times I was down at the ACS and stuff that I saw and how I think it kind of demonstrates some of the problems that I have with how this city is approaching uh, our homeless neighbors. So I was down there with one of the groups that I work with, distributing food. It's one of the, the basic dignity programs that we have down there, just a hot, decent meal for people. Uh, we see two uh, MPD uh, rigs pull up. Guys get out and spread into the tent. Okay, we start talking to a couple of the folks and they're kicking out uh, one of the residents that I've known for years. And she's a little old lady, white haired, has lots of cats. Um, and she loves to collect stuff. Always likes to take more uh, silverware and stuff. Always likes to have plenty of water bottles and that kind of stuff. They're kicking her out because her campsite's too messy. And to do that, they had to call the police department. Again, I couldn't help but think while we were doing this that my federal tax dollars are being wasted by these guys, and we still have to call the cops to harass a little old woman. All right, so he went on to uh, continue to talk a little bit more about this, and according to Joe, that there is a pay-to-get-them-away approach to the federal money that has been used to make the rest of us safe, and now look at the vulnerable population, warts and all, metaphorically speaking. Moving on, the city wants to ask for some money through the community development funds for uni uh, unified application. These are uh, requests for grants, just so you guys know. This is called the community development funds, which will funnel many grants through the city and go towards housing, land trust, CBDG, block grants, and various fundings like HUD to support goers through affordable housing. Kendra Lysom from uh, Community Development on Grants talks about the uh, area median income um, in detail. So there she is. In 2022, Missoula's AMI for a family of four um, is approximately $80,000, which means our HUD funds can help families making less than 65,000, while our trust fund dollars can help families making less than 97,000. When we compare that to the affordability threshold from the Missoula Organization of Realtors, which is basically what a median earner can afford to pay for a house with 5% down, we see that the most a family could pay is approximately 340,000. And there are only 279 ho houses sold in that price range in 2021. And of course, you see these numbers, it's, uh, it's, it, it's crazy, you know, just how high prices have just become and just, you know, $340,000 for just a basic house. And those kind of prices, you know, like I've seen those, like uh, the kind of houses that they sell at that price is roughly, um, you know, three bedroom. You're lucky to get um, maybe two toilets and uh, one bath, official bath, full bathroom. So it's, it, it is a, a very, very uh, disconcerting a lot of times. And Car uh, Karen Gis uh, Gisvada, uh, along with uh, Krinda, K um, Kendra, spoke more about this uh, grant money and what, what it actually would go towards. You'll probably recognize these projects. They have been recommended for this year's home funds. The Trinity and Bellagio projects have been funded with home dollars in the past, and they have returned this year to ask for additional funding. The home program also allows for the designation of what is called a community housing development organization. And CHOTO is a nonprofit organization whose main purpose is to help build capacity to develop affordable housing for the community it serves. Okay, so uh, this is, you know, those are two of many other projects that are happening, you know, the city and of course the affordable housing committee is also being used to um, utilize um, a lot of grant funds and a lot of money is going that way as well. And and the, uh, I believe the affordable housing um, land trust is also um, um, being able to get upwards of a million dollars uh, of this coming new financial season. So there's a lot of opportunity to be part of that. And they're also looking for board members of the affordable um, housing trust committee. So you guys can check that out on this, the city's website moving forward. So this is one of many projects uh, such as Burlington Street Project and 22, 22 is slated to see more than 400 new rental units and 11 chances at home ownership further separating the, you know, there's, there's just not, there's not, there's just not a lot of 
chances for home ownership. There's, but there's going to be 400 new rentals and 11 chances for new homeowners. I don't know. It's just further set separating the renter slash homeowner. It's good that they got these places because Missoula is in such a landlord market, uh, taking advantage of these troubling times. Like I've 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 seen uh, just a lot of my friends who are renters who are, the prices are being jacked up. It's just like this is like post. Um, you know, like post like anti eviction uh, moratorium that um, the state of Montana, uh, the federal government passed a, uh, during the pandemic. But this money would also provide counseling for over a thousand people to get the help they need to get into stable living conditions. Um, so far, this is an ongoing process, and too many times people fall through the cracks, basically, um, uh, that they're not aware of these programs. Um, and hey, think about it like this, you know, like y there's programs out there for a lot of these people and a lot of people don't actually have the time to, you know, inform themselves, watch these city council meetings, watch these committee meetings. And that's why I kind of try to do a little bit more about this just to kind of engage with you. And speaking of engaging, engagemissoula.com is a good resource for projects like this and to get feedback from the public to see folks. And I actually uh, wrote a question to them and got a response from another project I'll be talking about coming up next. Um, you know, these uh, uh, grants, um, the city now has about $1.3 million coming in, uh, coming in to combat homelessness and frankly, no idea what to do with the funds. And here's Karen uh, talking a little bit more about the uh, home ARP. The allocation plan is currently in draft form and we want to stress that at this time we do not have a specific project associated with the plan. This is merely the first step in determining specific needs for our community through presenting the plan. As you move through the process, we will return to council for an amendment that will include a specific project or projects. Okay, so there's just, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of money coming in. I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of opportunities for plans. And, you know, I mean, even just speaking for my own self, here's a plan. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, we statistically, you know, they, They've mentioned that they're, let's just, let's just give it a number. There's 600 homeless people in the city of Missoula. And based on that, based on that, just Googling how many homeless people in Missoula, you know, it's not necessarily saying that people who are leaving in and out of their cars, not going to the pub, not going to the shelters or anything like that. But the divide, divide that $1.3 million into those 600 people, they get $2,100 roughly and that's basic that's good enough for a down payment for uh, uh, an apartment so that could in turn uh, put these folks in stable housing and from there you can um, use the services that already exist to get these uh, to get help for these folks two thousand dollars is a nice chunk of change and the average rent is about a thousand dollars a month uh, let's say you have your deposit ready set and delivered i mean that's just an idea um, i don't know if this would actually go over well because every individual case is different some people um, are uh, very hard to help um, and in some time circumstances escalate and things can get go from bad to worse for some folks as well but this would get people off the street and for uh, more than a month we can work with them retaining households because once you become homeless it's almost impossible to get a place but if you're in the middle of a home uh, there are a lot more services to keep people in their homes than there are for people who don't have any place to go. So it's a lot easier to keep people in housing and there's a lot of services that are in place. And I've talked to the, about this in length as well, but let's get back to reality. Here's Karen talking a little bit more about the proposed timeline. Our plan right now is to submit the allocation plan to HUD without a specific project in mind and then include Hallmark funding as part of the program year 2023 competitive application process. In the meantime, if the eligible project does come forward that we can fund with Hallmark we can forget, forego that competitive application process. And so as you saw right here, funds must be expended in full by September 2030. Um, this is uh, supposed to be money that's going to be a uh, long term uh, help for people that's going to be hopefully uh, funding, um, you know, maybe money would go to the POV. I don't know. There's just a lot of opportunities and you're getting a $1.3 million just to combat homelessness. So we're, we're, we'll see how that all lines up and how it all goes forward with this. But uh, Kendra Lysom comes back to look at the cost of living and how people are making good money are still burdened by uh, inflation, basically. This chart shows that nearly 8,000 households earning less than 50,000 a year are cost burdened. In Missoula County, for those earning less than 35,000 a year, 82% of households are cost burdened. Severely cost burdened low income households are more likely than other renters to sacrifice necessities like healthy food and health care to pay the rent and to experience unstable housing situations. 
While we have a robust set of tools to help those at risk or unsheltered, in particular our QPs, we're consistently seeing a gap as well. While it's hard to quantify precise gaps, we did our best by looking at the number of emergency beds Missoula has versus the numbers of homeless we're seeing. We are approximately 569 emergency beds, but 606 homeless individuals. Yeah, so there's there's definitely a, a like I was saying that the, the the number about approximately 600 people are approximately uh, the the number in which are are active homeless people that we have on record. So there's you know you can never take into account one person or another because a lot of times people are just not named and a lot of times people just coming in and out of town. Um, you don't know what their history is. You don't know who they are. Some of them would prefer that you don't know who they are. And that's just the way they like to live. And I've spoken about vouchers, and those are hard to sell to landlords. Landlords, it's a landlord market. They can sh pick and choose. Um, I've heard uh, many different waiting lists that can like rack up for like 30 plus people for a single rental unit. Um, and you know, it's just kind of ridiculous here in the city of Missoula. And Missoula is, you know, slow to up the stock of renting and housing and everything like that. So. Um, you know, on top of that, the federal money that is going towards affordable housing is set to expire within the next 10 years. Talk about having your feet to the fire. Uh, the biggest thing from this meeting was about the $1.3 million will go to help people, and this is open to the public for comment for ideas, just so you know. But if you know, money talks, and that would be the only way to get in them into housing in this uh, competitive market, regardless of all those housing projects happening now. So another thing that's uh, coming up is this new expansion of the Kearns Aquatic Center. So the Kearns Aquatic Center, part of their big facility in the McCormick Park, their indoor water park was kind of like what was considered phase one. So after X amount of years, here's uh, Parks and Rec Donna Gockler talking about the continuation of this new project with a uh, kind of like a, a rendering of what the building would look like. So take a close look. Uh, it's uh, fondly known today as the current Center for Recreation and Creativity. Uh, some of you don't know, um, but I uh, came from North Dakota where community centers were pretty common and became the focal points of uh, communities of all sizes where we'd gather for special events, uh, evening sports and wellness programs, dance, fitness, children's programs, swimming. And uh, one of the greatest curiosities I had when I moved to Missoula is why there wasn't a community center, uh, a, a true public community center. We have a lot of fitness centers uh, and we have a, a, a wonderful um, YMCA, uh, Zoo Town Arts and Community Center fantastic intellectual community center called the New Public Library, but we don't have a public community center dedicated to year round, seven day a week, recreation for all individuals in our community. And so part of this is it's gonna be an indoor kind of a, a workout area. You know, you don't, you don't have to be, um, um, you don't have to, you don't have to be a member, but you do have to be a resident of Missoula. That's just how Parks and Rec uh, a lot of times work if you want to use the facilities for any use. And they also uh, uh, provide it for anybody who does, isn't a resident here who wants to be able to use a lot of, utilize a lot of these spaces as well. So I think the one thing, you know, like, oh, they're going to be, be building a whole new building within the city with Parks and Recreation. Um, uh, Jonna thinks we should jump on this and talks about some of the costs associated with this. We do not think that this is the right time to build a facility like this. We do think it's the right time to adopt a schematic conceptual master plan so we can continue work. Uh, the, the way we did cost recovery was based largely on public input. So if we would go to a cost recovery of um, uh, you know, 80%, and if you think about government services, that's a pretty good cost recovery. You know, For every dollar in tax you pay, you get 80 cents back. Um, we looked at that and we looked at 50% uh, or less and we landed in a range that's kind of halfway between Port Missoula Re Regional Park Recovery and halfway uh, between existing aquatics facilities. And so a lot of the development plans, so if you really can't see a lot of the stuff that I'm alluding to around here, but development costs and uh, performa costs are uh, escalated for inflation for the 2023 and 2024 and the costs include today's pandemic inflation rates. And so total estimated project development cost is gonna be 44 
$44,575,000, and then annual expenses will be the $2 million um, for that X amount of time. So there's, um, this is a proposal. This isn't like they're going to be like, yes, we're going to start building this as soon as they vote yes on this. This is a essential part for uh, any kind of forward thinking preliminary, 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 preliminary plans. If you take a closer look, the estimated costs are going towards the $44 million. Uh, essentially, they have not officially asked taxpayers to foot the bill and are looking for other avenues for funding via their response in Engage Missoula, which highlights this project. Um, I also ask a question about, you know, like, you know, hey, you have all these spaces, you build all these new facilities, but do you also think about a lot of the staff to uh, help staff up the, uh, these facilities as well? Because we're growing, but um, is the budget reflecting that with the uh, student, uh, with the, uh, the amount of staff in places? So this is uh, their response for through Missoula, Engage Missoula, which they responded to me. Uh, we are fully staffed at Fort Missoula Regional Park in both, I asked about Fort Missoula Regional Park because I, I mentioned that it's like, kind of seems like it's kind of low attended there for people running the show there. So they said that they're fully staffed at Fort Missoula Regional Park in both parks operations, maintenance, and full-time recreation staff. The park maintenance team operates under a city county joint funding agreement and the recreational staff is funded by facility rental fees. Staff at CCRC would uh, operate sim similar similarly, which is that uh, convention center uh, that the, the, the uh, community center they're going to build. CCRC is the acronym for it, with a portion funded by the park district and some funding for program fees and facility rentals. Keep in mind that we're still in the early planning stages and the project is unfunded at this time. Before the project moves forward, forward, we'll present a full business operational plan to the city council to ensure maximum cost recovery and adequate funding for staff. So uh, that was the quote that they sent me and they wanted to uh, let me know that. Um, so you guys, you know, and the response was pretty quick too. So engagemissoula.com is uh, pretty effective and I, uh, I'll probably be start doing that a little bit more just to get a uh, nice quote response for you guys. So a little bit more engagement from my part <laughs> within the city, but Gwen Jones, City Council talks about tax reform and this project as well. This project um, begs the question that we need tax reform desperately in Montana. We have a very, very broken taxation system and we need tax reform and we need to figure out different dollars from which to pull po different pockets from which to pull dollars. And um, I would love to be in a situation where we did not have to look to philanthropy for the majority of funding for this item. Um, but that's another conversation for another day. In the meantime, we're looking at a con great conceptual plan. And I know how hard Donna and Mike Sweet and all of these people have worked on this for years and years and years. Um, and when I just take a look at what's going on in the world today, Missoula is growing rapidly, uh, which causes a fair amount of stress and disconnection. Our world is changing rapidly. Our economy is upside down. Our income inequity is increasing. And I think all of that points to the fact that it is all the more important to create something like a community center that pulls people together, that provides the vehicle for them to connect. And that's how we keep our community strong, is by connecting with each other. Um, we live in a very fractured time. And I think if Missoula is intentional and can pursue these types of goals, that's how we move forward and um, get to a better place. So I'm very much in favor of this. All right, so that was uh, Gwen Jones talking in length about how this and many other projects are gonna be uh, popping up in the city of Missoula. Um, hey, and if you really think about it, uh, Missoula is growing, which is 100% true. Um, Missoula itself has annexed different portions of Missoula. We're going to be having that brand new neighborhood off of Mullen. There's gonna be all those new houses uh, on North uh, on, the, on the north side of Scott Street. And so there's a lot of opportunities, which also means a larger tax base for the people. So um, if you're thinking that Missoula has a spending problem, um, we're getting, the city of Missoula is having more money to spend. So you gotta, like, it's, it's, it's you gotta think about it in that perspective um, at the same time as uh, we're constantly growing. So for more information about this meeting, you can get log on to the city of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us, and the city's official have been uh, urging folks to submit, submit comments and questions through engagemissoula.com, which is working with many folks 
uh, on these projects I mentioned, and they also responded to me. So up next, we have a promo for our summer camps. We doubled down this summer, folks, and we're a uh, little bit worried that we're not going to be able to fill up all these camps for the kiddos. So July, uh, pretty much the, uh, the week, three weeks straight right after the uh, 4th of July week holiday, which falls on a Monday, um, we're going to be doing uh, animation camps in the AM session and in the PM session. So we have two different camps happening in the morning and in the afternoon. And uh, a lot of the afternoon uh, ones are wide open um, uh, and there is it is kind of a, a, a weird kind of spot just because we're doing it from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. there's really like summer camps are, it's kind of hard sell like I, 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 I definitely noticed like it's a lot better from 1 to 5 than it is from 2 to 6 but our morning ones are just getting cleaned out like crazy so our morning camps are happening from uh, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. these are just four hour blocks for our chunks and you can uh, go online to see if you if you can um, see about uh, scholarship options as well. So enough of me selling. Here is a video of more selling. I'm back, ah! We're going to go check these out now. Once again, a hero rises. Hey guys, we are back. Oh, that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, just because you know, transition from white is like there's a storm. Uh, anyways, um, God, I, I I'm full of beans this morning. But let's kick things off. I um, wanted to mention some of the Friday events that are happening. Um, Friday, May is Bike Month. Ongoing throughout this month. This is uh, wrapping up this weekend. Um, Bike Month Missoula is a. Uh, um, a promo to promote people to go alternative ways of transportation rather than take their uh, single cars. Um, Rook, Roots Acro Dance Team auditions for age 13 and up. Roots Gymnastics and Dance. So Arts Missoula is the sponsor for this one. And they're doing as uh, uh, starting actually right now, well into this afternoon, they're doing the Acro um, Dance Team audition. So it's a good way for uh, um, young kids to uh, be part of a dance team. Great. Makerspace open hours. Makerspace here at the Public Library, you get a 3D print, you get laser, sc uh, laser printer scanners, all sorts of fun, uh, hands-on engaging stuff here at the P Missoula Public Library. M Makerspace is a wonderful place to basically have a 3D print. You can have a 3D scan of an object and you can recreate it. You just have to uh, uh, pay the cost of the raw material. So anything taken out of the library and never returned costs money. That's, that's the mantra. Anyways, I don't know why I did that. Shut up, Scott. Anyways, Stroller, Stroller Strides is happening at Tool Park. It happens every Friday at 9.30 a.m. Family fun time at Mismo Gymnastics at 9.30 a.m. Missoula uh, Museum Public Hour, Spectrum Discovery Center, get kids hands-on uh, learning with science. Um, but they also have our, uh, uh, all this library and fun stuff is also happening over at the Empower Place, which is located at the Missoula Food Bank, which opens at 10 a.m. today. And it is a wonderful source for people of all economic incomes to go in there and shop um, uh, for food and some nutritious meals and stuff like that. And they also have a beautiful, uh, uh, um, convention kind of uh, so gathering uh, community gathering spaces and they have cooking classes up there too so you guys can check that out and you can sign up and learn more by uh, the Missoula Food Bank all right so in terms of the library tiny tales and story time 10 30 a.m. this morning get kids and in involved with reading 
fun activity for parents and kids alike to go up to the second floor, check out the uh, Imaginar Imaginarium and the Art Box to enjoy some of this stuff as well. So kicking things off also for your Friday is MissCon. I talked a little bit about it, but I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about it. They kick off this weekend with MissCon. Uh, Missoula at the Holiday Inn Express in downtown Missoula. Basically all week along from Friday. It's actually kicking off at 11 a.m. Um, I saw another thing that said it was 2 p.m. But then again, this is a great place for people who like fandom, um, fun things. They're going to have professional cosplayers, artists, authors, and from what I remember, um, UFO folks looking for, I want to believe. And uh, um, you know, you, uh, this is going to be at the Holiday Inn Express downtown Missoula all weekend long. You can buy a weekend pass, you can buy day passes, all stuff like that. It is a good experience for those who love fandom and want to um, share it with other people who also want to share fandom. So it's a great way to make friends. Um, if you don't mind traveling this weekend, um, um, you're going to have to hold off because the, uh, actually I'll just jump right into it. St. Regis 45th Annual Memorial Day Flea Market. This is at St. Regis Community Park and Community Center starting at 8 a.m. on Saturday. St. Regis, the 45th Annual one, more than 200 vendors set up their booths in Montana's largest flea market in St. Regis. Take exit 33 off of I-90 and follow the signs of the Community Park and Community Center. Visit St. Regis, Montana, or actually St. Regis MT Flea org or you can call them at 649-1304 again that number is 649-1304 for more information and of course you always have to put the 406 number in there i don't i didn't need to mention that but i i, I just wanted to mention that but um going back to the library for today um yarns watercolor on the fourth floor of the library as always um, you have astronomy spectrum discovery center this afternoon at 2 p.m you have a uh, craft sip at the Create Art Bar, any all, uh, anytime, all day, all that stuff. Basic painting classes and stuff like that. Young Adult, uh, young adult Writers Group is uh, this afternoon at 3.15 p.m. Missoula Public Library. They usually do this at the Ellingson Room, sometimes online as well. So check out their virtual reality as well. MCAT is uh, hosting a virtual reality. Um, um, I believe uh, once school gets out, it's going to be every Monday through Thursday. But for right now, it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it's going to happen from starting at 4.30 p.m. tonight until close. Do, 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 do. All right, Yule Springer launch party, um, Grant Creek, Yule HQ, 5 p.m. It's a launch party. Um, Mojo and Selling for Free Concert, VRTX Fitness. It's going to be some acoustic music. You got Missoula Jazz Collective is going to be at Ten Spoon Winery tonight. Acoustic Rolls uh, going to be uh, some miscellaneous jam music at the Highlander Beer off of Reserve. Narcotics Anonymous is going to be at the uh, Fourth D Club. And starting at 7 p.m. and also University of Montana also has their Narcotic Narcotics Anonymous meeting tonight as well. Paint and sip, happy, go lucky, painting with a twist. Uh, Missoula Paddleheads Firework Flag Giveaway, Oregon Park and Allegiance Field at 7 p.m. Shark Buffalo Mirror Gods is going to be at Zootown Arts Community Center tonight. Uh, Sounds of Summer, uh, cello recital is going to be at the University of Montana and all others recitals at the University of Montana are always amazing. I always suggest you guys check it out. Dueling Pianos with Josh Farmer and Doug Olson is going to be at Stave and Hoop tonight. Um, Wailing Aaron Jennings is going to be at the Union Club tonight as well and those are your Friday events. Um, like I said, St. Regis is also happening um, this weekend as well as we jump right into our Saturday stuff. You got your typical farmers markets, uh, you got the people's markets, you got your OG market by the Red X's. All of them happen around 8 a.m. roughly to about 1 p.m. But if you take it from me, best time to really kind of show up are between 9.30 and about 10.30. Um, and then it starts getting really crazy and then it starts kind of dying down after like 1, 1 1.30, but that by then most of the vendors have pretty much either sold out or just pretty much wrapping up. So you guys can check that out and more. Um, um, yep, it just happens every Saturday, downtown Missoula. You can pop in, pop out. You don't have to go every weekend. I did it once every Saturday, one year. The last couple of years I've been kind of like, eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wonder why. Anyways, uh, Glacier Hang, Missoula Public Library. What? It's the Hang. They discuss an upcoming dramedy, a Montana-made TV show, Glacier, which is like Park Rangers, but like The Office. So anyways, that's right. They're needing all hands on deck to make this show happen. The show made by Montanans, for Montanans, in Montana, about Montanans. Montana, Montana. Pretty good sh comedy, we should say. Uh, let the artists gather and come together to this brilliant TV show. They actually got funding, so they'll be able to pay people 
to make this show a possibility. So congratulations to them and the Montana Film Office is getting some uh, grant funding through this uh, tax uh, uh, credit that the uh, that the state of Montana gets for that they passed a couple years ago. I don't want to talk too much about it, but this is going to be at the Missoula Public Library at the fourth floor, and this is going to be happening from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is all production, all that kind of stuff. So actors, get on out of here. I I'm just kidding. I, you can be an actor and a, a PA for all I care. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Sealy Lake um, Pollinator Garden Celebration. Join Clearwater Res uh, Resource Council to uh, celebrate the opening of the native pollinator garden in the heart of Sealy Lake. This family-friendly event will certainly have some of the interest for anyone who wants to join. There will be foods and drinks, kids crafts, face painting, music, and more. Make sure to stay and listen to the speakers who wish who will be presenting on beekeeping, how to create your own garden and home, and how to DIY pollinator habit, habit, habitats. My, excuse me. There will be a plant sale for you to buy native plants for your own garden. And you know, Missouri Art Museum has their art hang from 1230 um, uh, at the Missouri Art Museum. Uh, they provide, um, uh, what's that called? Um, brushes, paint, uh, painting equipment, art equipment for the artists as well. Um, and they also have some snacks. You know what doesn't have snacks? Our MCAT Saturday drop-ins. Bring your kids on down to not have snacks. Enjoy some stop animation. Um, what can I say? The last Saturday drop-in for kids wanting to do stop animation, basic movie making for the summer. Why? To get kids into our summer camps. That's why we ended by the end of May, Memorial Day weekend, and then we wait for the month of June to start seeing like, hey, don't you guys do Saturday drop-ins? Yes, but they're in our summer camps. You can sign up your kid. And then, you know, that's how we hustle. Uh, there you go. Now you know. <laughs> All right. So I don't know. There's really not much more I want to talk too much about. Um, um, later on, that's happening um, Saturday night. If you're interested in going out and about, you got um, uh, Draftworks Brewing Company is hosting uh, Bruce Carl Carlson with Ron Meisner. Uh, Trio Noir is going to be at Finn and Porter. Pesky Varnance is going to be at Ten Spoon Winery. Uh, the Breath of Fresh Air is going to be the Zootown Community Center. These are all happening early evenings. Uh, then as we get further into the later night and more uh, 7 p.m. kind of deals, we have Trans Future, Mass FM, No, at Free Cycles. Um, this is, uh, Free Cycles is always a, a fun place to go. You uh, basically buy a ticket to get in there, hang out there, uh, tap a keg, hang out with a bunch of people and listen to some music. Um, Malagna, uh, Argentine Tango Social Dance and Beginners is going to be at the Westside Theater at 8 p.m. tonight. So fun way to um, engage and learn something new while also meeting new people. Sound uh, Solid ca Karaoke is going to happen at West, uh, Westside Lanes. I'm not going to read the name because a lot of the names are just like, okay. Russ Nasset and the Revelators is going to be at the Union Club. Uh, and uh, Chris Moon is always at the Badlander on, uh, on Saturdays. So, boo, 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 boo. yep. So, okay, Miss Con, uh, this is Miss Con number 36. And it's gonna it's called Carnival of Wonders. So you're gonna see a bunch of people with steampunk top hats and all that stuff. So great. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on here. I don't want to talk too much about it, um, but I also wanted to mention that uh, the usually on Sundays the University of Montana usually has some kind of recitals, and this time they're doing a UM songwriter showcase, um, and they're gonna be featured at the Zootown Arts Community Center Sunday night. Uh, there's a hey, should I talk also talk a little bit about Monday because you know some of you might actually have Memorial Day uh, Monday off. So uh, if you guys are interested in doing things, um, you know, continuation, B basically Miss Con will be wrapping up. So there's, I mean, personally, like I've been to Miss Con on the Mondays and they're usually just like, oh, pretty much people are cleaning up in the early afternoon around two o'clock. So it's like, okay, whatever. So yeah, it's, it, it's definitely like the long weekend is over Monday. Let's clean up and just kind of get going. Anyways, um, yeah, the, honestly, the, there's not much going on for that. There, it's just a kind of business as usual Memorial Day. Um, kind of shenanigans. Nothing is really popping out for your Monday. It kind of feels like, hey, which is not always a, a, a bad thing. And, you know, if you have the Monday off like I do, I'm going to enjoy doing absolutely nothing. So if you want to do something this weekend, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net, MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening? Uh, go to MissoulaEvents.net and kind of see what's going on and subscribe to uh, different uh, um, um, events type pages through uh, Facebook, um, social media and stuff like that. And you can find out upcoming events and more. You can also go to the uh, online for the Missoula Downtown uh, Partnership 
and they talk about a lot of things that are happening downtown in festivals, events, especially what they're going to do it at Out to Lunch downtown tonight in Karis Park, kicking things off in the middle of June. Also in June, as we're moving on to the next uh, week, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about City Band. City Band is a, a thing that is a summer series that uh, community members can join with the band with get under Gary director Gary Gillette and play some music. And so they usually do this at the Bonner Band Shell in at Bonner Park and they have rehearsals there Mondays at 7 p.m. and then Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. they play their songs. So there's a really short turnover when it comes to playing their music but you have a lot of uh, capable musicians um, um, hanging on each other or uh, Leaning on each other. That's the word I was looking for. All right, I'm talking too much, um, and I don't really like talking too much about events, but those are the, some of the things that are happening in the city of Missoula. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good, wonderful Memorial Day weekend.